Oh. Oh. Yo, it's it's a baby rattle. Hey, what's up everyone? MJ from Kentertainment here and holy Hisashi Booty, man, it's been such a long time since I've recorded a video. My head's been exploding with so much stuff that's been going on in my life. The good, the bad, and everything in between. So this one is a really awesome video that's coming out for all of you because, hey, hey, ho, 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 is it Christmas yet? No, it's not. It's time to review the Ho-Ho Kendamas. So if you don't know what Ho-Ho Kendama is, it is an aluminum kendama that you can put things into pretty much to match the weight of your ken. Really, really interesting, really new kind of tech design for kendamas. They, they say themselves that they're the first ever weight controlled kendama. And kind of, you know, you remember the, the Yumu gifts? You could put stuff in there and it was supposed to just be like play kind of, you know, a novelty kind of kendama. But this one is real. It's a kind of a premium price for this bad boy. And it is very interesting, but that price might scare a lot of people away. In any case, we're gonna get into it. Come on, premium price, premium packaging. Whoa, this one's really light. This one's a bit heavier. Very interesting box design. You don't, you don't see this too often smoky plastic. There's a wax seal that's placed on it right there, but it also makes for like a really interesting break. It's a weird kind of like void of warranty and not really. Whap! Here it is, the ho-ho. Ho-ho-ho. That's it. Hey, that kind of freaked me out. I wasn't looking. There is some sort of like Halloween hair in the back. So you can't see it at all, but it makes a nice like kind of a design. We take it out of its coffin. You got to take off the excess hair. Whoa. Okay. Cool. Kenzama is sticky cups. The main point is the Tama, of course, but let's, let's check out the Ken. So no sticky on the small, sticky on the big and on the base cup. The slip ring is a very interesting shape, extra notches in here. It feels a little light. There's a little like dusting off of your hands, but that's no big. It's a maple Ken. How does this come off? Comes off very simple. No inter design. Nice little bevel popped out. Feels solid. Now straight off the bat, spike is a little short, but I'm used to that because Sue Ken's, the sinks are also similar to that. Interesting base cup, the way that it's shaped, it comes straight down, very reminiscent of the hand plant kendamas. All right, let's check out the Tama. This is very interesting. I wasn't expecting it, but sticky paint inside the bevel. First thoughts, my spike's gonna get stuck in there as it's trying to enter the hole, pause. It's just on the bevel side with it where the indent is, right? And it's not inside of the hole itself. He must have tested this a lot and figured out like you you need to put that there because it's not gonna stall otherwise. It is, it can, but you're gonna have a really hard time. Welcome back to 2011 Kendama Play. Oh, oh, yo, it's, it's a baby rattle. Oh, there's, there's a bunch of strings in there. Wow, you got it unscrewed a lot. All right, hey, I got a purple and red string. Purple seems like a silk satin, and then the red is a normal nylon. You get one big bearing. And there you go, that's, that's the inside of it. All right, well, let's slap this thing together and see how it plays. But actually, you know what? Before that, let me get some more information. We're gonna right now talk with the creator of Ho Ho Kandamas to give us a little more information, you and me, to open up the box, open up, unscrew the Tama and see what the company's all about, why he's doing this kind of stuff. So here we go. Bo Fang, creator of Ho Ho Kendamas. First of all, a very interesting name. Where does the name come from, Ho Ho? You can like turn the H O, my logo, 90 degree Chinese and Japanese character. Ah, that is for like uh, good luck. That's why it's the Ho Ho. Good luck, Kendamas. Awesome. Now, what was it about the Kendama that made you feel that it could be better, that it is important to have a weight-matched Tama? You know, sometimes I bought some Kendamas with like 90 grams Tama, Tama and 70 grams. That's uh, 
really makes me feel like uh, I I don't want to play this kanama anymore, and mm. I have to find another kanama to match the kanama and I can't. So it's difficult. So I decided to like find some uh, material with like uh, constant uh, intensity. I just figure out maybe aluminum. You came to the conclusion of aluminum. Did you test anything else? Uh, yeah, I test nylon and other uh, plastics. This seems like a very difficult thing to do. How did you find a factory to help you make this? Or do you have a background working with different material like this? Because I played yo-yo before. I just find a yo-yo factory. Ah, I okay. To do this. Nice. The sale price for this kind of product. And it's it's really difficult because we know that it's going to be expensive, um, especially, you know, you you come from playing yo-yo and I, yo-yos are pretty expensive. I was very surprised to hear yeah. about like, you know, just a yo-yo, but then <laughs> you think about it too. Okay. It's aluminum and it's, it's going to last a long time. Right. So it makes sense that, okay, I'm going to get this thing that will last me a long time. I can enjoy it where we see Kendama everything's made of wood, it's going to fall apart. So the price tag isn't so extreme unless it's like a hand-turned uh, kendama. Um, so yeah, so that I think is definitely the biggest thing where it's going to be tough for the, the customers, the fans of kendama to yeah. get their hands on this. What is the the weight of this? Do you know off the top of your yes. head? Yeah, 77 gram. 77. So everyone's going to get at least a 77. If you want anything under, no luck, right? <laughs> it's always going to be 77 and up. All right, right. Having it empty so you can open it up. Or what do you think of is good material for inside? Because I think many people might think that having things loose, like flying around inside, might change how it moves. So what is a good material for inside of the Tama? It's better to like stick something. On the, in the middle of the, the like right only where that core piece is yeah all right and what what kind of things have you put inside uh i tried some nuts gummy <laughs> bears and gum uh what did you feel work the best uh, the gummy bears why is the gummy bears so good because the gummy bear is uh soft it won't like flying inside it will like like better than other other stuff Ah, and then, hey, you can even use it as like a snack. You open that jam up. Brown, <laughs> brown. Another big thing I think a lot of people are concerned, worried about is the paint. How the big thing in kendama is how sticky is the paint. So in your case, for the ho-ho kendamas, there is no paint on the tama. It's full aluminum. What did you do to combat the, the fact that there's no paint here? So first I tried the sandblast. Uh, didn't work well, so I find a can of silicone and I put the silicone on the uh, cups and bevel and to bring more friction. How's the durability on this? What, have you done any tests for the aluminum itself, like smashing it on rocks or something? Or yeah, so the 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 layer will get off, the color will get off. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. How durable is your paint right here? How long will it last? Actually, I didn't test for that, but the thing is, it can be rain paint by yourself. This paint uh, is not a secret. You can buy it online. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. you can just tear it off uh, with your hand and put another. Very interesting. I think that some people might go crazy with that and put it all over <laughs> the place, get it natty <laughs> and just do it up. Okay, now let's talk about your shape, the can. Where did you get this made? Is this made at Hondui or a different factory? Uh, different. How did you come up with the design idea? Having this this ring right here and having it pretty flush, pretty straight out for the base cup. I just want want it like uh, be a little bit different because you know the edge of the middle cup is always go like this this way. So I want to try right. something different for the ring uh, because I got low back pain before I got like recovered playing kadama. So I like the ring. I spine. I just want to put, like a little story kind of a symbol of the back pain that you have <laughs> that's yeah, what it yeah. is oh, okay okay very cool very cool is there anything that i left out anything you want to say specifically about your your kendamas to everybody so they know 
actually I, I just uh, want to bring like more like new designs and material for the community. I, I need some like support to like to try more new things. So I, I choose the the maple can because I want to like I want players to try like first the uh, aluminum dama tama and maybe I will change material for the can later. And I, if I want to do like more, so I have to like earn some money first. That's the that's the difficult thing. I think everyone will go through, especially at the beginning of a, a company, trying to get people to buy the product to then support, so you could do more with your brand and create more more things for for Hoho Kendamas. But I think it's really cool. Well, as you know, thank you so much for your time. It was really great talking to you and uh, hearing a little bit more about the Hoho Kendamas. All right. Thank you so much, Bo Fan, for that interesting insight into Hoho Kendamas, what it's all about. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Let's string this thing up and start playing it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, here it is getting put together right now. Always use a stringing tool. Those are the best things ever. You gotta have one always with you if you're gonna be stringing up a kendama. And yeah, uh, Ken first. Here we go. And then putting it together, sweet. And geez, just like everybody wants long ass string. Okay. All right, this is way too long for me, but let's get the weights down, right? This is what we're all here for. 78, maybe with the bead in the string, who knows? But hey, 78. And the can, 76. Okay. Oh man, but first, first the string. I gotta, I gotta do something about the string. See ya. seems fine it's really really thick in there i think like when i played a soul painted cups back in the day i remember it being like oh that's it like i kind of thought there was gonna be a little more in there but this dude's hand doing it himself so he's really slathering it on in there tama just like when it came here the only thing is the bevel maybe that paint that was in the bevel isn't looking the best he's mentioning there's some problems where this tama gets loosened during play where it did a little bit, but not totally off. And again, you have to screw it so much to, to get it off completely. You would definitely notice before it turned into like a dangerous point. All right, everyone. So I've been testing this thing out for a few days now, almost like two weeks. And it's been holding up fairly well. There's nothing that's been falling apart on it. Uh, it's looking pretty good. There's some small dings from the bead coming out because it, it's such a fat bead that it comes out really easily. And this sounds amazing though. And a lot of people have been asking like, what about the sound though? I've seen some clips, what about the sound? It's amazing. It's such a nice, like hard hitting sound. The grip is good. The shape is pretty good as well. Lunars aren't horrible. It could use a little better balancing, but it's not impossible. The silicon in the cups really helps. But you know, this thing is, is weighted at 77 and he hooked me up with a Ken that matches the weight of this. So I don't have to mess with the weight of this at all. All right, but say I wanted to make it bigger because that's the whole novelty of this thing, right? You can open it up and you could take it apart and you could change the weight of it. So let's see what we got. I don't know what I have around the house to put it here. So the only thing I think you wanna make it heavier, right? If you had a heavy ass can and you wanted to put this on there, you would have to add weight to it and just around the house because I don't know what the hell else I'm gonna get. Uh, rocks? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill in this side right here. Oh yeah, these, oh, these are perfect. Definitely heavy. Got a little nice, you know, now it's really, a baby rattle. Is there a difference in play? Not really. Whoa. Was not expecting that. Um, heavy? Yeah, it's heavy. Now, I was thinking, what else could we put in here? 
on those hot summer days when you're out there and you want to cool off, how about you throw some ice in this bad boy right away? You see the condensation? Oh, look how wet it is. Oh, tip wet, yo, tama wet. It is super icy. And this is a new meaning of icy. Holy sh. Gonna keep it rolling, catch and flow style. So, oh no, man, I'm so in already. You know what? Oh my gosh, I'm so cooled down. This right here is the new tech in keeping cool in the summer with your dama. Oh, hey, how about this? I put it on my neck. Oh, this spot right here is so nice and suzushi cool. So now that this guy's wet, do I need to wet the bevel? Not anymore, because there's ice in it. Now, mind you, there's no drips of any water. No, nope. No, any kind of stall is still really hard to do. Yo, it's the reverse effect of, you know, putting sweat on a natty. Well, that's gonna happen, it's real slippery now. Wasn't able to do that at all. I wasn't able to get a still at all when there was no ice in here. Now, if you listen, the ice has completely melted. Water is still in here. If you were to use this with a full natty kendama to the point where the nat would be fully soaked, then how would the grip be? is completely soaked, so the contact is is better. It's not, it's not the best. You would definitely still want to stay on the sticky, but now the sticky is gone. But when you're really out in the sun for a long time, jamming the kendama, what is something you need? A towel, maybe, to wipe your brow with? But what you really need is some drink. That tasted horrible. <laughs> Let's see if I can fill this whole thing up with water. To the brim. With agua. This, this like center shaft goes completely down all the way through to the end of the tama. So, that's why there's zero water coming out. So, I guess technically, you could, oh, there goes the water, there goes the water. You could put like alcohol in here go into a party don't do what i'm saying and get through with some alcohol uh but yeah it's totally filled with water i'm not gonna drink that again that was gross hey this thing is definitely something that ooh, this is good training for like tama control so if you control it properly you do half or full rotation ooh, every time really utilizing the knees New way to practice Moshkames without moving the Tama. Now you could just do this with the normal Tama, granted, uh, but you don't get that awesome sound. And f even if you mess up with a normal Tama, you're, you're still going to, it's still going to stay on there. Here, it's the challenge. Very interesting, very different, nothing like anything that you've seen or played or heard before. And we're back. I just took a shower and feel better now. How to flush all the fluids out, the sweat off of my brow and out of my hair, as well as that kind of metallic -y taste I had in my mouth. Wonder how that got there. Final remarks for the Ho Ho Kendama Aluminum Tama. One that you can open up to change the weight of. Very interesting concept, interesting idea. By this new small brand, Ho Ho Kendama. Here it is, everyone. How does it look? I give it a five out of five because this thing just looks 
very appealing. It looks eye-catching. The metallicness of it just stands out so much. And of course, the simplicity of the design, the 7030, like you gotta love it. That's that's the way to go. As well as how nicely you can't even tell where the brake is within this line. Let's look at the can. The can is very interesting. It has a different kind of ring stall area right here, but actually it really helps with stalls right on that point. But stalls for any other point where you would naturally put on bird, um, the axe would probably be all right. Handle stall, it tends to slip off because there's not much of an edge right here. It doesn't really raise off. This is the most interesting thing and it works. So that's really cool to see. The sticky cups, work beautifully. They really, really help out. This can do its job and stick to the Tama very, very nicely. Lunar balance, because that's what everyone wants to talk about because everyone's all down with lunars. It could be a little different. It could help out if there was maybe a base cup hole, but then you would lose surface on the base cup. So, you know, there's give and take on everything you look at for this guy. But Lunars are impossible. Lunars are very, very possible. So don't worry about that. If you've been worrying out, oh, can I do a lunar with this thing? Yeah, you can, no problem. So how does it play? I would definitely give this thing a three out of five because again, base ring, the slippage happens so much. Over to stilt was is very difficult to get down. The string that is always popping out, this thing is never not popping out. Whenever you just pull up, bam, it's out of there. The good thing is though, I could get some snake bites. Let's see if I get you one right now, uh, which I could never do before. And as you can see, I'm not good at it. Still, the extra glue here on the inside of the bevel really doesn't make any difference whatsoever. If there was anything on the very edge, uh, it's all gone now. Even still, like it, it doesn't matter because this thing is just so slippery on any of the stall spots, except the ring slip. Other than that, this can is very up to shape uh, to nowadays standards. The cups aren't massively overly big, which I enjoy definitely. And the Tama, again, just looks really nice. You have a really long, you had a really long string. I chopped it down because I don't need long strings because it doesn't go with my play. The price for this thing. Now this is the kicker guys and gals. hundred bucks about plus whatever shipping fees and whatnot. And I gotta be truthful, if I was to see this and think about should I buy this kendama, you really have to look at the novelty idea behind it because that's what it is at least right now. You know, our talks with Bofen, he said that he would like to do more things, test out more ideas. This was his first idea and pretty much to be real, if he can't sell any of these, then he can't move forward to create new types of products, new innovative products. Interesting to see what he would come up with in the future because the quality of this thing is really, really nice. Even the Ken itself, it's very interesting, very different, but at the same time, very comfortable. So I think that's what we're all looking for. You don't want to pay money for a Kendama that's new on the market and you really have no idea what it's about. Here it is, like I said before, kind of a novelty, but at the same time, it's gonna give you a play experience that you have not really played before in good and bad ways. But for me, it was mostly fun. You know, I did a lot of the crazy Ken games back in the day. I gotta start those up again, maybe, maybe, I don't know. This is definitely, I would say, for the collector. Someone like Alex Roish, someone like Maui Mike, does he still play? Someone like Matt Sweets Jorgensen, and even some shops who have just a wall of kendamas to play with. Sue Lab would definitely be one that I think this would be really fun to have to jam with people. The Terra Shop, they also have a wonderful wall filled with such interesting damas, and this guy would just go perfectly due to the fact you can open it up and you can mess with this thing so much. So if you're in one of those areas where you got like a crew of people that hang out, a place that you jam all the time, get your buddies in on it, throw like 10 bucks down and you could get one of these things to just sesh. This could be the Ken game Ken that you just mess around with just for shits and giggles. So there you have it everyone, the review of the Ho Ho Kendama. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'd like to say thank you 
extra special thank you can I speak to the Patreons, all my awesome supporters who've been supporting me for such a long time. You are really the best. I've been having some difficult times rolling around uh, for the past year. It's been tough, but I'm really looking forward to what I can do with this extra time that I have. And uh, maybe I'll release a little video talking about that more in the future so everyone can get in on it. But super thank you for everyone who's been supporting and still sticking with me. It really means a lot and it really helps me to push, make more stuff. Shit's coming. Shit's coming.